almost willfully ignoring what was happening. Gates is a smart guy. Unlike the management of IBM in the middle 80s, Bill Gates is awake and functioning, and he noticed that the internet was not going to be ignored. He tried to ignore it briefly, and then he saw it wasn't, quickly he saw, in time he saw that it wasn't going to be ignorable. What Bill Gates did was turn an industry super tanker on a dime. At first he didn't really get the internet, but once he did, he wrote a memo called The Coming Internet Tidal Wave, and quickly refocused the entire company on responding to the new environment. It's like Henry Ford going into aircraft production or Boeing into pizza delivery. But it worked. Microsoft was ever building, just in a new direction. Bill likes to have a general feeling of paranoia throughout the entire company as to you know, who's going to come along with something that's going to destroy one or all of our businesses. And so people are very receptive to um, an understanding of a, of a sudden direction change. When Bill finally says that boy, we better do something about this. Um, instantly, people get it. I wrote a memo at one point called the Internet Tidal Wave that very explicitly said, you know, I've told you many times in the past, I think uh, the Internet is a, is a priority. I'm now telling you it is the priority. And the timing was very good there because we were getting along in terms of Windows 95. We thought we had that all well understood and we could really get a lot of energy focused on the internet. Microsoft announced to the world their change of direction on a date with historic significance for Americans, Pearl Harbor Day. It was actually uh, Admiral Yamamoto who observed uh, that he feared they had but awakened a sleeping giant. We did a, a big event on uh, December 7th, it must have been 1995, where we, for the first time, showed the world how this had all built up. And they saw, hey, this is pretty dramatic. This company uh, is going to deliver great internet software. So that saying it was an epiphany is a little too much, but uh, saying that, that, that it became the centerpiece of our strategy, that's absolutely right. You will hear from us that you know, we're not forming an internet division. Uh, to us, that's, you know, it's like having an electricity division or uh, a software division. Uh, the internet is pervasive in everything that, that we're doing. The big break happened at the famous Pearl Harbor Day talk, uh, um, but you know, Microsoft was doing a bunch of stuff leading up to that. And if, in fact, they have, this, they have this, this thing they do now, which is every three months they come out and say, you know, and re-announce how hardcore they are about the internet. And, and so they've, they've like done that like five or six times now. When the slumbering giant awoke, this was the result. Microsoft's own browser, the Internet Explorer, a product designed specifically to compete with Netscape Navigator. Funny, don't they look alike? But in 1996, there was a big difference between them. Netscape Navigator cost business users $49. Internet Explorer was free. They're working hard, as you can see here, implementing all the standards we need. And what, what do you think we'll charge for that? Like all the others, nothing. Okay, well that's, that's quite a deal. <laughs> Ours was always not free, it was freely downloadable. But if you were a business using it, you had to talk to Netscape about a licensing agreement. That was the way we felt we would be able to make money in the early days, and that was the way we made money. We made $75 million the first year in revenues, and $375 million in the second year. The third year ended up, ended up being somewhere north of 500 million in revenues. And, and I, um, we did that by selling, giving, giving licenses for companies to make company-wide use of the browser. Microsoft's free Internet Explorer started taking market share from Netscape. To people who care about the market benefits of competition, that's a controversial thing to do. Giving it away is an anti-competitive technique. They're trying to kill Netscape by drying up its revenue sources, and it's, it should be illegal. They should not be permitted to do that. In, uh, if, if, there's, if any antitrust has any use, it's to go in now and say, you, caught, you spend millions and millions of dollars to develop the thing and you give it away. Hmm. Why are you doing that? Clearly you're doing that to damage Netscape. You're not allowed to do that. Microsoft came along in an attempt to put us out of business, gave away the browser totally free even to companies who wanted to use it for business. And it, it definitely had an impact on us. As a consequence, we had to give away, give away our browser. 
The results were just as the first exponent of giveaway software would have predicted. John McAfee. If you have two competing products and they are on a par in terms of functionality and usability, the free one is the one that will propagate. Maybe that's why Microsoft is just a little sensitive about whether they are or are not giving their browser away. Well, Microsoft's never been accused of not knowing how to make money. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty straightforward. If you can sell volume uh, software, you can do quite well. Now, in order to keep Windows very strong, we felt having a free browser that promoted our extensions, as well as providing all the power of, of all the other standards, that that was critical to our strategy. And so the browser investment is totally paid for by the fact that it helps Windows. And Windows is a very good, uh, quite profitable business. Do we give away software? I don't think so. It's that nobody ever told us we were giving away the print manager, the thing that lets you configure printers in Windows. It's just a built-in piece of Windows. The browser, similar, is really a built-in piece of Windows. Now, we sometimes update it when it's not time to update the rest of Windows. And so we basically sort of think, mm, let's make sure people get all those updates. But in point of fact, to run our browser, you got to own Windows. So in a sense, while the browser itself may be free, we're getting paid. On May 18, 1998, the Microsoft Netscape dispute took on a new dimension. The U.S. government stepped into the fight. The Department of Justice filed an antitrust lawsuit against Microsoft alleging anti-competitive practices in the browser market. The Justice Department has charged Microsoft with engaging in anti-competitive and exclusionary practices designed to maintain its monopoly in personal computer operating systems and attempting to extend that monopoly to Internet browser software. The intervention of Uncle Sam into an industry which until now hasn't had much regulation is a seismic event in the history of the Internet. It may take years to resolve, but you know, I bet Microsoft even has plans to deal with regulatory earthquakes. Well, Netscape is the, is the leader, and Microsoft is the big... Microsoft's playing the role of IBM, if I might go back to the mid-'80s. So Microsoft is the big bumbling company who got taken by surprise with the internet and, my, and Netscape is the Microsoft <laughs> has switched roles. So Microsoft is now the dominant monopoly which relies on much too often I think on its size rather than its excellence to succeed. Well Netscape's done a very good job and you always expect new people to come along. I didn't know, you know what their name would be or who they would be but they'll always be every year uh, companies that latch on to what the latest thing is and, and get a lot of visibility uh, and deliver products that relate to that. They're ruthless and vicious and if they decide they want the business you're in, ask anybody who's gone up against them directly. Now, in fact, of course, they weren't in our market when we started. So we were hardly going after a market that they were aware of, but they then realized it could be a big market. And, it's their God-given right to own any big market in software. When you're up against Bill Gates and his money, and he is following this strategy, the best bet is to get into another business. You know, just say, okay, forget it, I'll do something else in life. Because you cannot compete with that. So who will win this battle of the browsers? Well, Microsoft's Blitzkrieg has already taken a big bite out of Navigator's market share, forcing Netscape to match Microsoft's tactics and give their browser away. Is history repeating itself? Will Bill Gates own the Internet the way he already owns the PC universe? I don't think so. No one owns the Internet. And it's a big place, growing so fast, there's always room for someone with a dream, a taste for cola, and a willingness to go without sleep. Someone like Joe Krause of Excite. The 26-year-old tycoon gives me a tour of the new headquarters for his billion-dollar company. This is where I figured we'd film the death of Spock scene, okay? So you put me in here, you put me in here, and you turn the halon on. The last mind meld. Tell my wife I love her. It's a new show. It's 